Today, we're going to go over a very important topic, flutter flavors, or in other words, environment configurations. These are dev, staging, prod, and so on. This topic might seem complex, but we're going to break it down step by step. Let's go. First, I create a folder called Flavors. This isn't a requirement from the framework, but it's a good practice for organizing code. In this folder, we'll keep settings for each environment separately. Why? Because dev and prod are completely different. They may use different APIs, enable or disable features, and we want everything clearly separated. Now, I create a file called Flavor Config. This file will contain the global configuration, which we can access from anywhere in the app, like a global settings access point. Here, I declare an enum flavor, which will have three values, one for each flavor. Then, I declare a flavor config class. It will be a singleton, so that we can access the current environment from anywhere. A singleton is a design pattern that ensures there's only one instance of a class and it can be accessed globally. Then, I add variables to the class, flavor, base URL, name, and so on. Then, I create a private constructor. These are parameters that can vary between dev and prod. For example, the base URL for dev might be different since the dev server uses another database. After that, I declare a static variable of the same type as our class. This is needed to create the singleton. It will be nullable and private. Now, let's create a factory constructor to initialize our class. It will take in all the parameters from the class. Here, using the equals operator, we call the private constructor. This line means, if the instance variable is null, call the constructor and assign the result. If it's already initialized and not null, do nothing. This prevents multiple initializations of the class. Then we return our private variable, using the exclamation mark because we know it won't be null at this point. Now, we need to provide access to our private variable. We'll write a static getter. First, it checks if the variable is null. If it is, we throw an exception. In other cases, we return the variable. We use the exclamation mark here since we're sure it can't be null. We can also write a couple of static methods, like checking if the current flavor is prod, dev, etc. We simply compare the value from the getter. After that, let's edit our main.dart file. First, we rename it. This will now be the shared entry point for all flavors. Here, we create a method that takes in the flavor type, a name, and a base URL. Inside, we initialize our singleton class with these values. Then, we run our app. We don't have the app widget yet, so let's create it. Nothing fancy here. We've done it many times. In the app bar, let's show the current flavor name, which we get from the singleton. In the center, just for demo, we'll show the base URL. Now, we move on to the most important part, splitting entry points. I create a few files in the root, main dev, main staging, main prod. Why not use one main.dart with conditional logic? 
because having separate main files makes builds and debugging easier. I can clearly specify which configuration I'm building. This is especially useful in CICD and during publishing. In each of these files, I create a main method. There, I call main common. This is the shared initialization logic to avoid code duplication. I pass in the appropriate parameters for each flavor. This way, when we run main dev.dart, the app knows it's in dev mode and needs to use the dev server. Same goes for the other files. Now, let's go to the build.gradle file. First, we define flavor dimensions. We pass apps as value. Then, we set up product flavors. This is a list where we configure each flavor. We start with dev. We first pass in the dimension parameter with the same value as above. Then we add application add suffix. This lets us install multiple builds on the same device because the package name will have .dev appended. Next, we add version name suffix to make version names distinct. If we want different app names for different flavors, we use resValue. First the type, then the name, then the value. Later, we can use this variable in the manifest. We do the same for staging, but with different values. Only the dimension stays the same. Now for product. Since we don't need extra suffixes here, we skip those parameters. We only provide dimension and the app name. After this, we use that variable in the manifest file to make the app name change depending on the build. For now, we have one manifest for all flavors, which covers our needs. But if you want different manifests or resources, like icons, per flavor, you can create a folder named after the flavor and add the necessary files inside. The Flutter app will use files from that folder if built with that flavor, but we don't need that now. Let's move to iOS Setup. Open Xcode. Create a new scheme and name it Dev. Do the same for staging and production. Then go to Runner. We need to duplicate the build target for each flavor. First for dev, then staging, then prod. Do the same for release and profile. After that, go to Manage Schemes and assign the configurations we just created to the schemes. Start with Dev. Go through each section and set the right config. Just follow along.
do the same for staging and for production. Now, let's make sure the app name changes here too based on the flavor. Go to Runner under Targets. Open Build Settings. Add a new user-defined setting. Call it App Display Name. Expand it and provide the value per configuration. For Dev, we add the suffix Dev. For staging, staging, and for production. Now open the info plist file and use this variable. Change the CF bundle display name to a syntax that references our variable. Now, let's add Run configurations in Android Studio to make it easy to run the app. Here's how to do it. Duplicate the Run configuration, rename it, and change the entry point file. Also, be sure to specify the flavor. Do the same for staging and production. Let's run the app and test it. First, for Android in dev mode. As we see, the app displays the correct info, which means everything is working. If we exit, we also see the app name is different. Now, run the app in staging mode. That works too, and the app name is different. Finally, run the production version. It also works, and the name has no extra suffixes, as expected for production. Now, let's test on iOS. Run dev first. That works too, and the app name is correct. Now, staging. That also works. Then production. And the best part, all the code is the same, but depending on the entry point, a different environment is activated. This is a powerful approach, especially for complex apps with different APIs and logic per environment. I'll leave the build commands in the description. That's it. We've just implemented a full Flutter Flavors setup. Now dev, staging, and prod are fully separated, and we can easily switch between them, build different versions, and ensure no test code makes it into production. If you found this helpful, hit like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.